How do you become comfortable living alone? When are you going back to your condo seems silly to not use it. Are you seeing anyone? Are you single? Do you invest in the stock market? Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a Q&A while doing my nails and just catch up with you and answer some of your questions that you asked me on Instagram. If you are not already following me on Instagram, you can click the link down below. My handle is just pretty polishes and you can participate when I ask questions next time around, but also that's probably the best way to reach me. I will always reply to your DMs on Instagram. <laughs> Today I'm going to be doing an at-home gel manicure for the first time and I'm using Madame Glam Soak Off Gel Polishes and they were kind enough to send me these polishes but this video is not sponsored. This is my honest first impression review. And I also have a small little UV lamp that will cure the gel polishes. Madame Glam is a brand that I have heard about for many years and I have just always been like a regular polish girl but especially now that everyone is doing their nails at home, I wanted to try out a gel option so that I can let you know my thoughts on the application and if I would recommend. So they sent over three shades. Um, they are all perfect for spring. There's this green shade, which is dusty pastel green. Um, this really pretty blue gray, which is called Mindset. I really like this. Um, it's very similar to my shirt color, but it's a little bit more gray like I swatched it and It's a little bit more dark. So I want something more bright on my nails and this last one is called vanilla sky And this is the one I'm gonna end up using today because I have been obsessed with anything lavender along with those shades They also sent the top coat and base coat. These are all soak off and I was reading about these polishes. They are vegan, cruelty free and nine free formula. Before I get into the questions, I need to kind of just situate myself. So from what I've read about these polishes, I kind of did a little bit of research because I've literally never used gel nail polish before. I've had it applied to my nails before, but I have never done it myself at home. I did a little bit of research. So you just apply the base coat and then the color. So I'll probably need two coats. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then the top coat. So basically as if you're painting your own nails with regular nail polish, pretty similar process, but I have found that, or I read that thinner coats are better than doing like a thick coat on your nails. So that's the approach I'm gonna go with and I'll let you know my feelings along the way. And just to make this that much more complicated for me, I'm gonna be going through your questions on Instagram so that we can chat while I do my nails. And I would love if you were also doing your nails at home, so leave me a comment below if you are also doing your nails with me and what you're using on your nails. Better yet, send me a picture of them on Instagram. Okay, let's start out with a question before I get distracted in doing my nails. This first question says, do you regret dyeing your hair blonde? So if you were following along, I got blonde highlights in my hair um, and they've definitely grown out because it's been at least six months now. I actually like it better now that it's grown out. I think at first the pieces of blonde at the front were a little bit too high up in my bangs for my liking. So now that they're more grown out, I like it a lot better. No, I don't regret it. I actually really like um, the look of it. The only thing that I don't love is the damage that it has done to my hair. I think that's to be expected, but I'm someone who has never really dyed their hair before, and I can definitely tell the damage that's done to my hair, especially when I can't go to the salon and get my hair trimmed regularly. Okay, so I did these four fingers with the base coat, um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cure them because I don't think I can get my thumb in this little machine. But it's so cute, this little portable machine. I really like it. Let's see how it works. And then I also uh, read other reviews about getting like gloves to protect your hands where you can just see like the tips um, so that you're not putting the UV light on your skin. I think that if I'm gonna continue doing gel manicures at home, I would definitely invest in that because I think protecting your skin is really important. Okay, so I press the button, it did 30 seconds. So does that mean that the base coat is cured? Feels good. I don't really know what I'm doing here. <laughs> This next question says, have you considered getting a pet? Yes, absolutely, I have considered it. If you watch the vlogs, you would know that I am obsessed with our family dog, Merlot. Um, he's currently 13 years old or turning 13. 
um, at the end of the month. Maybe I should do this thumb at the same time and then put them in the machine together. So Merlot is a Yorkshire Terrier. He is the love of my life. He's so sweet. And I absolutely love having a dog around. Um, truthfully, he's what is keeping me here at my parents' house. That's another question that I'm getting asked a ton. What about my condo? We'll answer that in a moment, but <laughs> he's definitely keeping me here because I'm just so comfortable in my routine with him. And I love having company, especially working from home. It's just so nice to have someone around. <laughs> I understand why people get pets because they are such great companions. So I have considered getting a dog of my own, but I know that it's a ton of work and my eyes have truly been opened <laughs> because my brother and sister-in-law got a puppy in November of last year and boy is he a lot of work. <laughs> we definitely forgot about puppy energy because uh, he is the same breed of dog as Merlot, so he's a Yorkshire Terrier, but he has so much energy because he's a puppy and Merlot's 13, so Merlot sleeps a lot, he's very cuddly. So that has made me realize that I am not quite ready for the responsibility of getting a dog on my own, but I would love it and I... <laughs> I want to, I want to get a dog. We'll see, never say never, but as of right now, seeing their experience has opened my eyes and made me realize that, yeah, it's probably not a good idea right now, especially on my own, right? Like, not like I'm sharing the responsibilities with someone, it would all be on me. Okay, so far, so good. This is working well. This next question says, how do you motivate yourself to get out of bed every day during lockdown? So <laughs> while I'm filming this right now, Toronto is in yet another lockdown. Ontario is not doing so well with the rollout plan of vaccines and the spread of COVID is very high. There's a lot of cases every day. Mentally, it's been hard. I think everyone has felt it in so many different ways. Like your life has changed dramatically over the last year and it doesn't look like there's any end in sight, like that's really hard. But with that, that out of the way, I do wanna acknowledge the question. So the question is how do you get motivated to get out of bed every morning? And for me, that has been creating a morning routine that I love. I absolutely love waking up in the morning, having my morning coffee and cuddling with the dog. <laughs> and that's why I spend so much time here at my parents' house because of that routine. And that makes me happy. I've been enjoying starting my day with that slow routine where I, you know, sit and watch a YouTube video for like 30 minutes while I cuddle and drink my coffee with Merlot. That is the best part of my day. And that's what gets me out of bed every morning. So my advice to you is to find a morning routine that you love and that will make you want to get out of bed every morning. Doing something for yourself that makes you happy is what I recommend. If that's, you know, having a slow morning like me, or it could be going for a morning walk and starting your day by, you know, getting some fresh air, clearing your head, whatever it is, I think that is really important. So something that I've noticed about these gel polishes is they are very thick. So now that I have the base coat complete, I'm going to apply a thin coat of polish. It's pretty opaque. Okay, I'm just gonna get to the question that everybody wants to know. Well, actually there's two questions that I got a ton. So the first one is, when are you going back to your condo? Seems silly to, to not use it. And then I got a ton of other questions about my living situation. How's your life going working from home? Do you go back to your condo often? Are you planning to stay with your parents long term? Any plans to buy a place closer? If your work keeps you online, are you going to sell or rent at your condo? A ton of questions about the condo. So here's the thing. <laughs> the condo is a little bit of a sensitive subject for me right now. The moral of the story is, I still live there. <laughs> I've been spending probably about 75% of my time here, 25% of my time downtown. I still love downtown. I am not ready to leave and I love my condo. I don't want to leave it. But all of the options have crossed my mind. I thought about renting it out. I thought about buying a place closer to my parents here. I thought about just living there full time, but that gets lonely. <laughs> I explored all of my options and I'm just doing a little bit of everything. <laughs> and at the end of the day, splitting my time is what is making me most happy and I never decided to like move out. I think now that it's getting warmer, it's the spring um, and summer is, you know, just right, right around the corner. I have been spending more time downtown. The city has been alive again and the city is just my home. I can't leave it <laughs> just yet. Think about it this way. Some people have cottages that they go to for like four months out of the year. So 
I just have a condo in Toronto. <laughs> All jokes aside, at the end of the day, my heart is still in Toronto. It's still my home and I'm not ready to make any permanent decisions. <laughs> the mindset that I've had this whole pandemic, live in the moment, take things day by day. I know this is going to be opening myself up to so many opinions um, and I get it. I also understand that I, I am very privileged. I freaking have two homes right now. Here's another question on a similar topic. How do you become comfortable living alone? <laughs> <laughs> the ironic part of this question is that I think that's why I have split my time between spending time with family and being alone in my condo is because I am a bit uncomfortable with living alone. It made sense for me when I was going to work every day and I was around people and then at the end of the day, all you want to do is be alone. <laughs> I am definitely um, more introverted than extrovert and I am fueled by my alone time. So it made sense for me to live on my own. But now that I'm spending all day every day <laughs> alone, working from home, I get lonely. So that's where I'm not as comfortable being completely alone. I think that also makes sense. Like no one is meant to live in a pandemic by themselves. I guess some practical tips here. I really enjoyed having music playing when I'm alone. That way you have like background noise and you don't really feel lonely. You're not alone with your thoughts because you have music playing. I would always have some sort of music playing or video playing or podcast playing. And then the other thing is when you live alone, you need to be intentional about making plans with people. Again, this advice is not as applicable because we're living in a pandemic. Um, but for, for those of you around the world that are doing better than Ontario right now, maybe this is applicable advice. You need to go out of your way to make plans with people so that you're not spending 24 seven by yourself because that's not good for anyone. Here's a good one. Do you consider mental health important? Would you like to go to a therapist? Good question. So I think I probably would have shied away from answering this question in the past because I feel like there's a level of shame associated with seeing a therapist. But the reason why I am including this question is because I don't think that there should be shame. Like we're in 2021. I think normalize mental health and seeing a therapist to better yourself. But my answer is I don't see a therapist, but I have considered it. I think that I'm currently on a self-love and mental health journey to bettering myself and I definitely have considered it. Another good question, do you keep a planner during quarantine? Yes, I still do. I think it's actually more important than ever because the lines have blurred between work and life. So I really like to keep a to-do list so that I can set goals at the beginning of the day of what I want to accomplish and prioritize you know time to do that and for me that's writing it down I don't necessarily use like a formal planner more just a notebook where I write down my to-do list um, and I find that really helpful okay first coat is done and it's looking good so far I'm scared to touch them because like I don't know if I'm doing a good job but they look good so far definitely one more coat and they should be good I've been trying really hard to do thinner coats because I can tell on the nails that I did thicker coats by accident, they didn't cure as nicely. They're more smooth, but I just feel like they didn't cure all the way through. But so far, so good. Here's a good question. Do you invest in the stock market? I think I mentioned this in my last Q&A. That has been a new hobby of mine. I definitely don't do like day trading or anything, but I have started to invest um, like doing self-directed investments in the stock market. And it is so empowering. I think that everyone needs to learn how to invest. And there's different investments that work for everyone, right? Like some people do day trading. Some people will do self-directed investments. Some people will have an advisor manage their investments. Some people will invest in like index funds or mutual funds or, or GICs, right? Like there's a different type of investment for everyone or like in, this, in the real estate market too, like buying properties. Those are all investments. There's different types of investments for everyone. You need to find what works for you, but I think it is so empowering to make your money work for you. It's really not enough to just have your money sitting in a savings account. Like in today's market, the returns are so so small on savings account. Even if you have a high interest savings account, the return is so minimal. I think that's truly the bare minimum, <laughs> but I would recommend some sort of an investment account and take the time to 
learn more about your options. All right, last but not least, the juiciest question of the Q&A, the question that everyone wants to know, <laughs> are you seeing anyone or are you single? The answer to that is yes, I am single. No, I'm not seeing anyone. For me, dating has really not been a priority. It's a pandemic. I don't know how people are doing it. Online dating, I don't know, FaceTime dating. For me, it's it's really not a priority. I have been committed to spending the year just working on me. I think I've been doing well at that. Um, and I feel like I've grown so much as a person. It's really funny because I have been a relationship person my whole life. I love the idea of having a life partner, someone to do life with, and that companionship. But truthfully, at this point in my life, that could not be lower on my priority list. Like I know that that will happen when it's time for me, but for right now, I know that there's other things that I need to focus on. My mental health, my confidence, self-love, my career, spending time with the people that I can spend time with in my life, um, investing in the relationships that are already in my life. Those are all things that are a priority for me. And I honestly have been really happy. So that's that. That's the tea. <laughs> okay, my nails look cute. Thinner coats are key. Thinner coats are key. Okay, let me do the top coat. These are the final nails. I love them. I love this color. I can't wait to see how this gel polish wears in comparison to traditional nail polish. So follow me on Instagram if you want updates on that because I won't include that in this video, but I will definitely update you on Instagram. Follow me there, at Pretty Polishes. But other than that, it was so nice to catch up with you. This was a very honest Q&A. We'll see how much I got out in editing. Thanks so much for watching and supporting my channel, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.